Okay, in this video I just want to solve a series of problems, about four problems involving hemoglobin and uh, the, di the various effects of different um, allosteric molecules on it. So over here, number six, I say explain the effect of the following changes on the O2 affinity of hemoglobin. So there's about four questions here and it wants us to explain the effect of the changes on O2 affinity of hemoglobin. So the first one says a drop in the pH of blood plasma from 7.4, which is normal physiological pH, to 7.2. Okay, well, a drop in pH results in a decrease in the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So a drop in pH would result in a decrease in the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So what this is essentially is this is this is really just the Bohr effect what we're talking about. So where we have some sort of increase in uh, protons or hydrogen ions, um, we have a decrease in we have an increase in protons, which is causing the uh, blood plasma to become more acidic, or or the pH to decrease, and as a result, it stabilizes the deoxygenated state of um, hemoglobin and that's due to histidine 146 residue being protonated and forming a salt bridge with an aspartate 94 residue. So that stabilizes the deoxygenated state and um, all, all I would say here maybe in addition which I'm not going to write is that this is usually the result of H plus binding to hemoglobin. So this is a result of H plus or proton binding to hemoglobin which stabilizes the deoxygenated state. I should say the deoxygenated form of hemoglobin. So by stabilizing the deoxygenated form of hemoglobin, it allows the oxygen to be delivered to the tissue where it's needed. So remember I said this is like sort of like a trade-off. It's harder for oxygen to bind under these conditions, but it's much easier for it to be removed. They're much easier for it to be delivered to the tissue where it's needed. So that's really the upshot there. So a complete answer for this one might be a drop in pH would result in a decrease in the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. This is a result of H plus binding to hemoglobin, which stabilizes the deoxygenated form of hemoglobin. It allows the oxygen to be delivered to the tissue where it is needed. So that would be a nice complete answer to the first one. The next one says a decrease in partial pressure of CO2 in the lungs from 45 tor holding one's breath to 15 tor under normal conditions. So I want us to say again how the O2 affinity of hemoglobin will change here in the case of in the case of a de uh, in the case of a decrease in the partial pressure of CO2. Okay, well we know that CO2 binds to hemoglobin at the amino terminal end to form a carbamate or carbamate. This stabilizes also the deoxygenated form. So the thing to remember about a lot of these allosterics are that they just they, they almost all of them stabilize the deoxygenated state. So if CO2 normally stabilizes the deoxygenated state and we have higher pressure or higher partial pressure holding one's breath initially and then we're going to lower partial pressure, that means less CO2 is going to be available to bind to hemoglobin. And if less CO2, 
is available and the partial pressure is lower, so there's a lower concentration of CO2, that, that essentially means that the oxygen binding affinity is going to go up. So hemoglobin is going to bind oxygen more easily in this case. And that's exactly what I'll, what I'll start writing out here. So CO2 binds to hemoglobin and stabilizes the deoxygenated form and stabilizes the deoxygenated form. And then I would just say thus, if less CO2, or if, I'll say thus, if the concentration of CO2 decreases, less CO2 is available to bind to hemoglobin and the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen will increase. Okay, so minus my terrible handwriting, I will read this back to you and what I feel would be a complete answer here. CO2 binds to hemoglobin and stabilizes the deoxygenated form. Thus, the car, thus, if the concentration of CO2 decreases, less CO2 is available to bind to hemoglobin and the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen will increase. So essentially what we're, what we're going to have happen here is there's going to be less CO2 available, and less, lower concentration of CO2, and that's going to allow us to have um, more oxygen binding or, or greater affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So moving on the C here, an increase in BPG levels from 5 millimolar to 8 millimolar. So how would that how would that change? So if we increase BPG. So BPG is a negatively charged molecule that binds at the central cavity of hemoglobin. And BPG, like the other two, CO2 and H plus or CO2 and protons, also stabilizes the deoxygenated state. Okay? So that also stabilizes the deoxygenated state. And remember I said before that 2P, 2 BPG, 2, 3 BPG actually um, is what gives the S-shaped curve to um, hemoglobin. So BPG stabilizes the deoxygenated form of hemoglobin. So it stabilizes the deoxygenated form of hemoglobin. And I would say maybe making it more difficult for oxygen to bind. Or make it more difficult for oxygen to bind. But again, as sort of a trade-off here, um, although BPG makes it more difficult for oxygen to bind initially, it makes it much more easily for oxygen to be released at the tissue where it's needed, which is one of the reasons why you know athletes will train at altitude, and then when they go to compete back at sea level, this change and they have more BPG essentially at altitude here. So at altitude, they'll have eight millimoles of um, BPG. And their bodies will be more adapted to better using the oxygen or rather better delivery of the oxygen to the tissue where it's needed. So if I'm an athlete, I'm running, I'm exercising, I'm weightlifting, I want to make sure that I have the most efficient possible I want to make sure that I have the most efficient I want to make sure that I'm, you know, I'm able to deliver the oxygen in the most efficient manner is what I'm saying here if I can get it out. So again from 5 millimolar to 8 millimolar, if we increase that, then that means that it's going to stabilize the deoxygenated form, making it more difficult for oxygen to bind.
So that's how it's going to affect um, hemoglobin here. Now the last one is something I didn't really cover too much here, but I think we'll be able to work our way through it. It says the mutation of histidine 143 to serine in the gamma chain of fetal hemoglobin. Residue 143 faces the central cavity of the tetrameric hemoglobin. So, we're ha so we have a mutation of histidine 143 in the beta chain of adult hemoglobin to serine. So we're changing histidine, which is polar, to serine, which is also polar, but remember histidine can accept the proton, and then it can become positive. In the case of serine, you're not going to see that. It does not um, accept another proton to become positive. So the mutation of normal hemoglobin, what they're, what they're basically saying here is that the mutation from normal he adult hemoglobin is then going to be changed to what's known as fetal hemoglobin. Most textbooks cover this and talk about this a little bit. So what I would say is that this mutation from normal hemoglobin to fetal hemoglobin will increase the affinity of will increase the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen okay so what I'm saying here is that this this change in the this mutation in the residues here in the, from histidine to serine is actually going to increase the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen and you might say to me, well, why is that? That, you know, I don't understand. And that, that's, it really comes out to a very simple premise here that a fetus must take oxygen from its mother's blood. So, I mean, you gotta take, it's gotta take oxygen from the mother. And um, in order to take this oxygen from the mother, the hemoglobin must have a higher affinity for oxygen than the mother's. So, the fetus must take oxygen from the mother and thus its hemoglobin and thus its hemoglobin <coughs> must have a higher affinity for oxygen. So it's really just kind of a really, really simple premise here. Must have a higher affinity for oxygen. So it's not deprived of O2. Okay, so it doesn't so it gets the sufficient oxygen that it's need that it needs. Since this mutation occurs though at the central cavity the person would not be able to bind molecules such as 2,3-BPG. So remember, this mutation is occurring at the central cavity. The central cavity is where 2,3-BPG binds. So that would end up actually increasing the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So, you know, if you're, if you're not able to bind molecules like 2,3-BPG, you're going to increase the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen because 2,3-BPG actually decreases the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen under normal conditions. Again, it gives that characteristic S-shaped curve. So this is going to have more of a myoglobin-like curve associated with it. And um, that's basically it. I think that this accounts for how you would um, go about doing this, these problems.